this is a stove top. It's a, a wood burning cooktop, I guess you'd call it. It's also an oven. This is the actual stove that my mom learned to cook on when she was a kid. And I've had it for a few years. It's, uh, it's made by, it's called uh, the New Victor, the Jacobs Manufacturing Company, Bridgeport, Alabama. And it is a number 817X. Pretty cool. Uh, it's only got a couple of problems that uh, I'm going to kind of work on. I don't plan on using this thing, of course, but uh, I didn't know it had any problems until I got it home from Mississippi. It comes apart quite a bit. There's a lot of parts in there, you know, grates and such that. Uh, Take out, clean everything, put it all back together. Everything's there, as far as I can tell. Okay. The problem is this leg, the uh, whatever attaches, whatever it attaches to under here, which is a flange right here. It, it actually slides into a couple of flanges. One of those flanges is broken, and the other problem. is that somewhere along in its life, and I'd love to hear the story, somewhere along in this stove's life, it has been shot. There's actually impact from a, from a round of some kind that hit it here and then broke the whole thing across there. Now this, uh, let's see, it really should, I mean, if you were gonna use it, you really should fill that up. This is your oven. The leg that I uh, need to repair. Everything works. Get, uh, air inlet. This is how you can, you know, access the, the grate to, to either clean it out or whatever. This uh, comes out to clean out your your ashes just don't make stuff like this anymore do they Okay, now we can see how these legs are actually attached. They, uh, there's a little, two, two little brackets here that are at a slight angle. And when you slide your leg in there, it's a friction fit. That's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these just to kind of inspect them a little bit. Tap them out of there. We'll take a grinder. We're going to dress this out. It's just that one tab that's actually damaged. So what I'll do is put the leg in place, clamp it down maybe, and then uh, weld, weld it on that one side. If the other side is not damaged, then it should hold it. Okay, we got everything, all the bad welds removed and 
uh, ground down to where it's ready for a little welding. We're going to use our little Hobart Handler 120. I'm going to max it out. This is a, a 120 volt, you know, machine, so it's not made for thick stuff. But uh, it should do just fine for what we're doing. This is this cart's actually the first thing that I built when I bought this welder. You know, I got it home and I was up in Montana at the time and just went and bought some scrap steel and uh, kind of cobbled it all together. This worked for a long time. I've had this thing about 20 years and uh, works great. But let me get all this hooked up so we can start welding. Always gotta have a good ground. While I'm thinking grounds, let me show you. I'm not gonna mention any names. I should, but I'm not. But I was watching a guy try to weld for the first time. He was actually using a stick welder. And he was having a heck of a time with it. And uh I went over there and, and was looking at uh, what he was doing. He had driven a ground rod in the ground and had his welder's ground clamp attached to it. So the only feedback he was getting was from the ground. And, and he was actually welding oil stem pipe. Uh, so the, so the pipe was in the ground. It was picking up a little bit, but boy, it wasn't working too hot. And man, when I went over there, I said, uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta clamp that to the workpiece. He goes, are you serious? That's, yeah, that's, that's where it goes. So, uh, saved him a lot of heartache. So, ground to your workpiece. Plug in the welder, turn the gas on, it's already set, uh, the gas flow is already set to 20. And uh, what I noticed while I go on this leg, when I reinstalled one of the good legs, I noticed that it does not, that the leg does not go all the way through that uh, little, these, uh, these, these spots here where it wedges into, it doesn't go all the way through, there's about an eighth of an inch or so where it does not. So, uh, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is heat this up and then hold the leg in that spot, identical to the way this back one is here, and then try to tack it in place. So, that's what we're going to do now. <coughs> Alright. Got everything set up. The welder's turned on. I've got my auto darkening helmet on. Man, I love these things. Just press a couple buttons, verify it works, put it on, start welding. It'll spoil you. I'll warn you. So we want the leg to be right about in this position right here. Up against that boss tight. We're going to heat this up, reach over and grab our, our welder, and uh, put a tack on it. First thing we gotta do is get this thing hot. I had an old Buick, 1950 Buick Roadmaster one time I was restoring and it had a cast iron exhaust like most everything else, you know. And it was busted up pretty bad and I took it to a guy who, uh, who was able to braise it and get it back together, you know. So, I mean it is possible to get these things stuck back together, but I am no good at brazing. 
It's an art. I've tried it. I'm not an artist. So we're going to try this BC truck method. You guys get over to BC truck. Subscribe to him. He's got some pretty good videos out there. And best of all, you know, it's free. Like my stuff. Hey, there may not be any value to it. <laughs> but when I was sitting down watching his channel this morning, I said, you know what? I've got a stove for that same problem. I'll try it. Okay, that should be good and hot. Turn that off. All right. Drop my helmet. Make sure it's where I want it because you only get one chance, really. Hey, I believe that might work. Pretty cool. Let's take a look at it. Not the prettiest well in the world, but it's going to work, I bet you. I bet you. I may put a little extra on there just for just for the heck of it. Warm it up a bit. Oh yeah, we got some penetration on that one. That's gonna work way better. That's what I was looking for. Shut this gas off there. Take a look at it.
that's not going anywhere, I don't think. We'll see soon. We'll get this thing flipped over and put it all back together. Alright, now it just so happens that a few years ago, I was in, uh, I think, Tractor Supply, and I bought this Imperial Stove Polish Paste. It's water-based, you apply it to, uh, with a rag or whatever, a dampened rag, and uh, when it dries, you polish it off. So I'm gonna give that a shot. A little water here. This is actually this cloth I'm using. You're not gonna believe this. This is off my dad's World War II Navy uniform. It's 100% uh, wool. We have used this stuff for years on different projects, polishing uh, furniture, you know, putting uh, putting stain on and then uh, men wax behind it. It's great for that. So if you got any wool, if you ever if you ever need to polish some furniture, find you some some wool and try it out. But I'm going to apply this wax. I'm going to use this brush to kind of get down in the pits and stuff because this is old stuff. This, this stove is, I mean, I don't know how old it was before she, before mom started cooking on it. But we're, we're talking, you know, she was using it probably in the 30s. So, <laughs> it's pretty old. I would imagine it wasn't new. Nobody had anything new back then. You know, you just made do with what you had. Let me get this stuff applied here, brush it in, and we'll, uh, we'll take a look at it here in a minute. Okay, all the wax has been applied to everything that I'm going to put it on. Uh, the only tip I can give you is uh, you might have saw me using a toothbrush. An old toothbrush works great for getting in the nooks and crannies up around the hinges and all the flanges and everything. Wear gloves. This stuff is black as coal and uh, you wouldn't want that under your fingernails, I don't think. So wear gloves. All right, so by directions, we're supposed to let this dry and then buff it lightly with a soft cloth and be done. I'll just let it dry and see what it looks like. If I want to buff it, I'll buff it. Maybe not. But that's it. The old stove looks good as new. Except for the bullet hole. 